Hey everyone, so today is all about hair yet again. It seems that you guys kind of enjoy these videos. So I decided that I was going to kind of go through all of kind of my at-home hair care products, products, whatever. Um, so I'm just going to go ahead and jump in and kind of talk about each of them because there's a lot. So the first thing we're going to start with shampoo. So I jump through different types of shampoo depending on what I need for my hair. So as you guys know, um, I suffer from dandruff, so sometimes I go to the shampoo, and this is Head & Shoulders. Um, unfortunately, this is not my favorite shampoo, but if I'm having like a really bad situation going on, I definitely will use this. The only problem that I have with this product is that it's so drying, so, you know, if you're kind of this, one of those people that get dandruff from a dry scalp, this doesn't really do it for me, but I do keep it around just once in a while if I need to use it. It is the product that I use, but not as often. Number one would be the Apogee Deep Moisture Shampoo. I live and die and swear by this. It is the best shampoo that I've ever tried um, as far as kind of more salon-like type shampoos, I guess. Um, they say that this one is supposed to help um, make styling easier, restore body and vibrancy, and also control frizz. So I love products that really put moisture back into your hair. So I really love to find kind of hydrating, moisturizing type shampoos where you feel like your hair is not super duper dry. Um, so another product that I actually have a love-hate relationship with, and I mentioned this in a hair video forever ago, um, is the Queen Helene Garlic Shampoo. So this particular shampoo, um, if you guys didn't know anything about garlic shampoo, it's really supposed to help with kind of itchy, irritated scalp. Also, if you have like hair breakage and hair loss, it really helps with that. I picked up the shampoo initially because I was shedding like crazy. So um, when I purchased, I, when I found out about this shampoo, I tried it, loved it. So it works really well, but the product that I, or the problem that I have with this shampoo is that if you don't use another shampoo to kind of get all the dirt, oil, products and stuff out of your hair, you end up using a lot of this. So I never, there's, well, let me back up. I've done multiple times, got in the shower or went to the sink, you know, got my hair saturated, wet, used this, tried to create a lather and it wouldn't happen. So it doesn't seem that it wants to lather up and actually really work with dirty hair, like straight up, you know, you just wet, wet your hair and you go in with the shampoo. So I've wasted a lot and of this My last product. shampoo is the Organics Hydrating Macadamia Oil Shampoo. So I discovered this shampoo, uh, I guess over a year ago. Yeah, it would be over a year ago. And I have repurchased this time and time again. Back to what I was saying before, you know, hydrating, moisturizing shampoos are amazing because your hair just sucks in that moisture. So I tend to have fairly dry hair, so I'm really um, conscious about putting in the moisture and things like that. And this is an amazing shampoo. So now I'm kind of going to get into conditioners and um, what I use to really condition my hair. Um, number one, obviously, would be the Hydrating Macadamia Oil Conditioner. I love this conditioner. Um, if you guys don't know about organics, it's so accessible, so easy to find. You can find it at the drugstore. I think I picked this one or these two up at Ulta. It's by far the truth. I love it because it does not weigh my hair down, which unfortunately a lot of conditioners tend to do. And I'm constantly rinsing and rinsing and rinsing to make sure that it's completely out. Um, but this doesn't weigh my hair down. It feels really moisturizing. It smells amazing. Um, and it's a really good shampoo. Um, actually conditioner. So I do use these together when I am washing my hair. Um, even when I have pre-poos or co-washes, I really gravitate to this conditioner as well. But it has not replaced my holy grail conditioner, which is the Dove Damage Therapy. Um, deep, I believe this is the <laughs> Daily Moisture Conditioner. So I have been using this conditioner for years. And I always get the really, really big bottle because I use it for deep conditions. I use it for pre-poos. I use it for co-washes. I use this conditioner every wash all the time. 
and I love, 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 love this conditioner. Recently, I started using both of these conditioners together, and it has changed my hair, changed my life. And I guess one other type thing that I would include in my conditioner is a moisture mask. So hair mask, I used to be like, whatever. They're like conditioners just in a little pot. And when I picked this one up, which is a hydrating macadamia oil, and it's the intensive moisture mask, I thought no different. I was like, ugh. When I opened it, I literally thought it looked just like the conditioner that I got until I tried this. When my hair is super parched, like really, really needing it, or I did a treatment of something and I really need some moisture in my hair, this is what I definitely go, um, go to. And it has changed my life. It is not really thick, but you don't need a lot. In a year plus, I've only used about that much product and I have a lot left so it's one of those things that my hair drinks it up soaks it up loves it so it kind of when I tried this it really changed my whole perspective of um, kind of hair mask so if you guys don't try hair mask definitely try to get this one and, and try it out it really makes a big big difference now I'm gonna get into kind of some of my hair treatments and I don't do a lot because I am no longer going to be relaxing my hair. I'm trying to see if I can do like a full transition into natural with trimming. Um, obviously the relaxed stems off and things like that. My last relaxer, for those of you who are going to ask, was July 26th of 2013. So it is, um, what's today say? January 24th of 2014. So that's been... August, September, October, November, December, January. So about six months, um, six months, seven, seven months, six months. So I typically, when I used to relax my hair, stretch it out six to eight months, or sometimes I only get a relaxer every year. It just depends. But I'm really going to see how well my hair holds up um, and just the texture of it. I've noticed so far with all of the new growth. I wish I sh sh could have showed you guys because I just washed my hair today. But um, it really feels very amazing. Like I love seeing kind of my curl pattern come in as what my hair used to be as a kid. So I'm kind of wanting to start slowly transitioning, but we'll get into that a little bit later. But some of the treatments that I do, um, I did mention in my last video was the apple cider vinegar treatment. Um, and I keep this in this little bottle, as you guys can see all the junk. That's not all organic stuff that's stuff in there. <laughs> but, um, and it's so funny because I was watching Dr. Phil actually today and he confirmed this. Um, he had a lady on there that was talking about that she had dandruff and he gave two options. Obviously, the um, apple cider vinegar mixture, which is in my last video. If you guys are interested, please check that out. The link will be below. Um, he also talked about that, but also talked about kind of using coconut oil. So I'm kind of excited to go get some coconut oil and try that out as well. But the apple cider vinegar is kind of an experiment. Um, I've been doing it maybe, this would be like maybe my fourth time. So I'm going to give it a few more months and then I'm going to come back with another video of how, you know, my final thoughts of this particular product and kind of um, determine how it's helped my hair, how it hasn't helped my hair, whatever it may be. But we'll get into that a little bit later. Um, and the next one obviously is a protein treatment. So the protein treatment that I use is from Apogee. Um, this is probably the most, um, you know, easy, easy breezy type um, protein treatment because it's just two steps. I know that I was supposed to do a video on how I do a protein treatment um, like ages ago, but typically I had been going to the salon and getting um, a protein treatment, but my hairstylist is gone. Um, they're overseas right now uh, doing some work over there so I'm kind of on my own and I'll be needing one of these soon but um, essentially it's really easy um, to do this so if you guys are interested and want me to do kind of a protein treatment tutorial please like this video or leave a comment in below and I'll be happy to do that now I'm going to kind of get into my hair oils um, I used to not really care for hair oils um, because I always thought oh they're gonna weigh your hair down and things like that and I kind of like this you know, body, sh <laughs> you know, movement type thing. But oils are really, really important, especially essential oils to your hair. 
Um, so when I started kind of playing with oils, I started out with extra virgin olive oil from my kitchen. We used to use organic cold pressed um, oil and it, it worked really great. I would put it in kind of my pre-poos and my deep conditions and things like that. Um, also, if you guys watched the last video, I did kind of show you a little bit of my deep condition using one of my oils. But we'll talk about a couple of my oils. One um, is a oil that I just discovered actually this past year. And this is from Sunflower Mega Care. And it's their extra, extra virgin olive oil and it's premium natural hair oil. And this one here um, says it's treatment for dry hair. Um, also has growth hair oil rejuvenator and it's supposed to help against dryness like dryness and damage and things like that but what I really loved about this particular oil was that when I read the when I turned it and looked at the ingredients it was everything that I could read so it has a mixture of sweet almond oil metal foam seed oil um, you got olive oil shea butter retinol safflower safflower oil um, you've got honey extract there's so many different things in here and I'm able to read the ingredients. It's not a lot of chemicals and, you know, things made in a lab. And, you know, the more natural that you can stay with your products, your hair, the better your hair is going to love it anyways. So I really do truly, truly love this oil. And I've been putting it in all of my pre-poos, all of my deep conditions. I've even heated it, you know, heated it up and used it as a hot oil treatment. It works so great in so many different ways. So once again, I found this at my local beauty supply store. I don't know where you can find it. Um, if I find a link, I will put it down below. Always check the description box for a list of all products and maybe some links where you can guys get the same stuff. So the next oil is kind of my newest addition to all of my hair care stuff. And that would be, um, this is the Jamaican Black Castor Oil. And it's from a company called, I believe it's Jamaican Mango and Lime. And this here, if you guys don't know what Jamaican black castor oil is really used for, mainly people use it for hair growth. Um, it's supposed to really help make your hair stronger, help it grow, replenish, rejuvenate, nourish, all those great stuff. Um, so I mainly see good results with people who have like, you know, thinning edges, you know, maybe you you know, to take care of your, your um, braids or weaves or you are constantly pulling your hair in a ponytail and your, and your um, edges have thinned out. This is a really good thing to use. I've also been applying this um, into my um, pre-poos and deep conditions and things like that. I've also used it as a hot oil treatment. Today, I use both of these oils in a hot oil treatment. I just put them in a little applicator bottle like this put it in, um, put some water in a cup, heated it up for three minutes, stuck this in there, let that heat up where the oil gets really loose. It's not as loose as it is. And then I just applied this, you know, to the scalp, brought it through my ends and stuff once I conditioned my hair and it feels great. So definitely if you're not into oils, start doing your research on them because they're going to make a difference. And then kind of my everyday styling oil, which I have talked about a lot and sorry, the bottle is disgusting. This is also from Organic, so it's Hydrating Macadamia Oil Dry Styling Oil. I think I included this particular one in um, a few of my favorites videos, and it really does the trick. I typically just put about a dime size in my hand, rub my hands together, massage in my scalp, bring it all the way through my ends and stuff. I usually will do that at the end of the day, or if I don't do it at night. I'll do it in the morning. It doesn't weigh my hair down. It moisturizes my hair just enough to keep it nice and, sh you know, nice and moisturized, but it also adds a little bit of a shine. So that's what I really, truly love about this oil. And also, a great thing about it, it's at the drugstore. So if I ever run out, it's it's really easy to, to pick up. So those would be my hair oils that I use. And last, I'm going to talk about... I didn't bring the other stuff in here, but I'll grab them. Um, kind of my leave-in conditioners and also um, some, uh, what do you call these? <laughs> kind of like a heat protectant spray. So the only leave-in conditioner that I use is also from Apogee. This is their Pro Vitamin Leave-In Conditioner. I really like this because it adds moisture without weighing the hair down. Typically leave-in conditioners I really used to hate because the fact that they would weigh my hair down, they leave like a little funky film. So if I 
did blow dry or it did flat iron my hair, I could feel it and it was just nasty. But when I discovered this one, it doesn't do that. This also does add body and shine to your hair. So if your hair is looking a little dull and you want a little bit more shine, you can definitely put it in there. And then what I really like about it, it kind of acts as a heat protectant. Um, and the last kind of heat protectant product that I use is the Tresemme Thermal Creations. This is their heat tamer spray. Um, this is probably going to be a minute from kind of my hair products um, kind of routine. Um, I've only got a little bit left. That's a product that I've been <laughs> trying to get rid of forever. So it does have um, alcohol in it. So unfortunately that is very drawing to your hair. Um, but I do <laughs> love the bottle, you know, it's a spritz for spritz. So once this is finished, I might put this in here and kind of use it as my heat, or use the other one as my heat protectant spray. I've been using this one probably for years. I've repurchased it. I think this is the second bottle that I repurchased it, but kind of doing a little more research on the ingredients and things. This is alcohol in it, so I got to get rid of it. But those are kind of all of my hair care products. But I wanted to just talk about kind of um, uh, tools and things that I use. So number one, I always use a large paddle brush. These are just easier for me to brush my hair. Um, they're easier for me <laughs> to put my hair in a wrap and things like that. And they don't um, like add static electricity to my hair. So that's one of the good things. The good one. And then obviously another thing that I truly, truly, truly love, and it's so dirty right now, so please excuse me, is a wide tooth comb. I think for anybody who um, is trying to do take better care of their hair, definitely needs a wide tooth comb. I sometimes just use this just to kind of like brush out my hair and things like that. But typically when I am blow drying or my hair is wet, I go for the wide tooth comb. It's less stress on the hair. It's not pulling at the hair because you don't have, you know, five teeth pulling while you're trying to part. So um, I truly do love a wide tooth comb. I believe this one's from Goody. You can get it, you know, Target, Walmart, wherever they sell hair brushes and hair tools. The last two would be kind of my heat tools. Um, my goal is to try to put less heat on my hair this year. I think I do a pretty good job when I flat iron my hair. I really stretch it out. Um, you know, I'm not a person who, you know, is constantly curling their hair and things. That's why you guys don't see like, you know, hairstyle tutorials and things on my channel because I don't, I try to keep the least amount of heat on my hair as much as possible. So this is my blow dryer. Um, and this is from Conair and it's called the Ion Shine 1875. So it's just your typical run of the mill, um, blow dryer nothing crazy it's got a hot and warm setting high and low and then obviously you have a cool button um but I like this because I use to use the nozzle I hate having blow dryers like this because I feel like the you know where you want your heat to be concentrated can't because it's going everywhere so I always use the nozzle part um regardless if I'm just kind of doing a quick blow dry or more of a smoothing type blow dry I always use the nozzle and then my flat iron is this one. Let me open this up. This is the Rubington um, Pink Pearl Ceramic um, Flat Iron. And I used to use like a one inch or half an inch or whatever it was. Um, but I got the bigger one. This helps me to um, kind of go by a little faster with the hair. Um, and I do less passes. So typically if I flat iron, it's not on. Um, the first one I'll go kind of slow, like kind of this pace. And then when I get to the end, I'll go through it real quick. And that's it. I don't go 20 million different passes or anything like that. Um, but this is just my, my flat iron. But yeah, those are kind of my hair stuff. Um, so I am not a hairstylist, I'm not a cosmetologist, I did not go to school for this. It's kind of everything that I use and stuff as far as beauty, hair products, whatever. It's all about, you know, trial and error as I always say. So once again, thank you guys for tuning in yet again. If you guys have any suggestions or you want to talk about some of the products that you guys use, I would love to hear that. Put that definitely down in the comments below. 
Um, I'm kind of want to see what people use as a heat protectant spray. So if you guys have some suggestions, da -da -da -da, down below. Um, all the products will be listed in the description bar. Also, I will try to find links for most of these products. So if you're looking for them or you want to try them out, you'll be able to find them. But once again, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys soon. Bye.